All right, well, if you can't beat them on the field, how about starving them and making it next to impossible for them to get their hands on water? I'm being a little bit over generous here to say that the fact of the matter is Vladimir Putin is coming up with a whole number of schemes to keep the uh, cruelty going, certainly in Ukraine, uh, by backing out of a Black Sea agreement, uh, whereas wheat prices then, as a result, immediately started soaring. Everything becomes more expensive in Ukraine. By the way, everything becomes more expensive worldwide. But this on the heels of uh, making it difficult for 8 out of 10 Ukrainians to get their hands on water, or at least to make it more difficult. General Jack Keane on all these developments. General, um, now we're into the crazy brutality sphere. Uh, nothing new, as you've reminded me many times. But this is scary stuff. What do you make of it? Yeah, well, certainly what's motivating Putin here is that he's losing the war on the ground. And we've known that for a number of weeks as you, Ukrainians are retaking territory that the Russians had uh, either occupied or had taken themselves early in the invasion. And they've chosen this other course of action to complement that is to, as much as possible, defeat the will of the Ukrainian people. So, as you mentioned, they are striking the electric grid and water supply for the obvious reason that shut the power off and also affect the distribution of water and sewage and, and bring real harm to the Ukrainians and hoping that it will break their will. There will be something of a humanitarian crisis as a result of it, but I don't believe it will break their will. If anything, it will increase their resolve. And then the second thing that you mentioned, this is likely a response in breaking the, the Black Sea Grain Agreement, where uh, grain was allowed to be exported out of Ukraine. It is their major commodity that they do export. They export it to Europe, Asia and Africa, and it's a, a significant world food supply that the Ukrainians are providing. But his motivation, I think, came as a result of the Ukrainians conducting an attack this last weekend on the Russian's naval base at Sevastopol. And for our audience to understand, the Ukrainians are legitimately doing that because those ships that are there, they are part of the ensemble that is firing cruise missiles at the very thing we're talking about, the infra energy infrastructure inside of Ukraine. So I'm hoping that this, this uh, shutting down of the Black Sea Agreement is only temporary. But I'm not surprised that it's taken place. I thought this shoe would drop by Putin at some point, because he knows that he can really hurt the Ukrainians by stopping the ships. And the second thing he wants is to hurt the countries in the world so that they put pressure on other countries not to continue to support Ukraine so aggressively. That's kind of Putin's motivation here, Neil. You know, General, this comes at a time there's reports out, an NBC report. It got a lot of play over the week, and I'm sure you're familiar where Joe Biden apparently lost his temper. I think this goes back to June, sir, over President Zelensky's impatience uh, with uh, aid and the, the, how it was streaming along uh, right after a $1 billion aid package was, was done. According to NBC, Biden had barely finished telling Zelensky he had greenlighted another $1 billion in military assistance. Uh, in its fight against Russia's invasion, uh, when Zelensky started listing all the additional help he needed and wasn't getting, and Biden lost his temper. I don't want to get into some of the back and forths on that, but you might have heard this before. What do you make of it? Yeah, well, I think we've seen publicly ourselves when somebody pokes at uh, President Biden, he has a quick fuse and he has a tendency to jump right back at them. And I think what happened here, as best I understand it, you know, he was going through the list of things that he was providing to Zelensky, and then Zelensky's retort was to come back at him with another list. And I think that's where the frustration is. And I think, you know, he he went after Zelensky over that issue. Now Zelensky knows this is the hand that's feeding him, Neil. Right, right. So later in that later in that same day, Zelensky issued a very public uh, comment that how much he appreciated President Biden and the support from the United States to make certain 
that there was no hard feelings uh, as a result of what was taking place there, that he's, he knows that he needs the United States support to continue what he's doing. But as you have indicated in many prior interviews, General, uh, he, he needs it fast and he needs a lot of it. That is President Zelensky. So he was showing his proper frustration in a country that's quite literally under attack by a superpower, no less. Uh, you think things have calmed down because we have been, as you astutely pointed out, General, paying the lion's share of this, and we continue to. In fact, we're paying, paying more than ever. Yeah, well, of course, we, we have the greatest amount of capability to do that by comparison to Absolutely. the other countries. Some of these militaries in Europe are just a, they're a mere shadow of their former self. They were, they were stand-up militaries, to, even to include the U.K. Uh, during the Cold War. But they, they have dismembered themselves and cut down their organization so dramatically. But the Eastern European countries and the U.K. are the ones that are the most steadfast. And actually, the Eastern Europe countries are making significant sacrifices by giving up equipment that is in their operational units. Hmm. And when you talk to them about it, they flat tell you the reason they're doing that is we are fighting the war that we thought we were going to fight ourselves, and the Ukrainians are the ones who are doing it. So we're going to give them the equipment we have. We don't—it's not a stockpile. We're taking away from our units because they have the opportunity opportunity to defeat Russia, and therefore we don't have to fight them later. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. Got it. General, thank you very, very much. Good to catch up with you, General Jack Keane, on this uh, important day where, of course, the, the, the pressures on Ukraine grow, as does the impatience with getting some help, as much help as possible. You can understand where they're coming from. You can understand oftentimes where we're coming from. It's a mixed bag.